And now I'm going to integrate the rotation of my forearms with a side-to-side -side movement in my spine and pelvis. Again, I've got some YouTubes of that incorporate this move if you need to go back and practice it, but let me just explain it. It's a, it's a tricky move for a lot of people until they kind of get what they're supposed to do. I'm sitting on my sits bones. I'm going to bring my weight into my right sits bone, and it lightens the weight on my left. And then I'm going to rock and bring my weight on my left sits bone, and it's going to lift a little bit with my right. And so I'm going to have this rocking motion, which is a lateral flexion or a side bending motion. I'm just going to let my head and neck be comfortable. And I'm going to just let, see what my arm, I'm going to use this rotational supination pronation movement in the forearms. And I'm just going to let my body see what they want to do in relationship to the side to side. So th there's, there are a lot of movements and variations. This is just one of many. So as I start to rock from one sits bone to the other, I begin to, hmm, I think my forearms right now just want to do this. So I bent my elbows. I could rest it on a pillow or a table, but it just feels good right now to just let my elbows be flexed. And as I rock, I just let my forearms roll. I might, in another time, want to rock and have my forearms go opposite that. But we are working with various side bending movements. Let's say I have a wheel in front of me and I might need to be navigating and turning. I might need to be navigating and turning and my forearms will need to be able to move and rotate. And I want to put that movement in my whole body so that my whole body is behind the movement. So I'm not like struggling. I want that movement. I want the foundation of the foundation of all arm movements, of all limb movements come from the spine and the trunk. Maybe I have to turn, uh, a, you know, put in a light bulb or undo a light bulb. I, I want to be able to turn my forearm and have my spine just figure out how it wants to turn. Maybe I have to do something down here to turn or something over here that I need to turn. And I want my body to support that movement. So there are lots of times I need to be able to rotate my forearms and have my body follow. Another very important integration move that I work with myself and with my clients is going to be what I'm going to demonstrate. In 2015, I broke both my wrist, my right, very severely. I crushed my ulnar, I'm sorry, my, the radial side of my bone where it went into my wrist. And this was one of the moves that really helped me regain function again in my wrist and in my forearms. And I'm going to demonstrate this now. It uses uh, also some uh, uh, wrist flexion. So a little bit of anatomy so you understand where we're going. So here's my thumb. And here's the thumb pad. It's called the thin R eminence. And I'm going to be taking this thumb pad to the opposite ulnar side, baby finger side of my bone, uh, opposite the thin R eminence. So I'm going to be taking this to this. And believe it or not, I am going to start in this position. So my palm is going to be facing me. I'm going to be taking the, the, the mound of flesh, the thin R, thin R eminence from the thumb, and I'm going to be turning my forearm and aiming this bundle of flesh down towards the sort of middle of my ulnar bone and then releasing back to neutral. Again, I'm taking the thin R eminence down towards the ulnar, the center of the ulnar bone. And this is pendicular. And again, that fleshy part of the thumb pad and turning with some flexion down towards the middle of my ulnar bone and 
back. The next move I'm going to do is to take the fleshy part of the baby finger pad, it's called the hypothenar eminence, and taking it to the middle of the radial bone on the thumb side. So I'm going to be doing this diagonal. And it's going to involve, um, it's going to involve, um, again, turning my forearm. I'm going to be aiming this fleshy part. I have to turn, I have to flex, and I'm aiming the baby finger side towards the radial side. There's a lot of twisting with this. Slow release. Hypothenar eminence, turning and directing it to the radial side and letting that release. It's a very interesting move to do, a very important move to do, and again, I would do it with one of, with one of my arms, I would do it with my, my other forearm and wrist, and sometimes I would repeat to both sides once in a while. I would then come and do both. And here, going diagonally, now the thumb pad, the forearm is turning, the wrists are flexing, and I'm aiming for the ulnar side, the baby finger side of the bone. Very wonderful moves. I still do them to this day. The other thing I like to do is, um, that was just another integration, is I just like to turn and twist my forearms, whether I'm supported or not. I could have my elbows on, um, on a table, but I often just do this in the morning just to wake up my forearms and my wrists, my hands, my fingers, a little bit in my elbows, although my elbows are basically just bent. I can go the opposite way. And I'm just paying attention to relaxing in my body, relaxing in my head and neck. I may find my spine moving a little bit and relaxing. Some of you may have done the twist. It's part of the daily cat routine. And where we're working with the upper and lower body going in opposite directions and the arms are turning and twisting. Well, this is a variation on that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my arms in this position and I'm going to see which direction not only are my elbows uh, flexing, but I'm twisting my forearms. I'm also twisting my forearms. So it's just one interesting variation. Might come up in dance, playing sports, all kinds of things you have to do to manipulate your, your hands and your shoulders and, and forearms to have your hands be able to go where they need to go. So it comes right out of its kind of a variation on this because my in this in the, in the in the twist in the twist my elbows are straight so that the turning motion of my arm is coming from my shoulder girdle the the elbows have to be bent to some degree to have the forearms be able to rotate so a lot is going on in that movement. It's a lot of fun to try and do, and it very much involves your shoulder girdle, both your shoulder joint and your, your scapula, along with the spine, the trunk, the rib cage, the forearms, and letting your head and neck not be stiff, but follow the movement as, the, as you are in the moment with it. I hope you try these movements starting with the simpler pendiculations and then moving into some of the flow movements to integrate
the forearms into more of your body and have the whole body work as a whole. Thank you.